Hello, hello everyone. It's me, Arden Lee. I am back with another video today and today's video is going to talk about what to do when you're feeling anger toward people in your life who are lying, who are not taking accountability for their actions, who are changing the story and manipulating people in your social circles to, um, uh, to feel certain ways about them or about you um, due to uh, you know, their creation of stirring up drama, um, throwing pity parties, etc., etc., doing basically everything but taking accountability for their actions. So what can you do in situations like this one that, um, that are, are causing a lot of anger and, uh, and bad feelings in your life? That would, um, you know, something like that would, uh, would probably make most people angry. So how do you deal with that? So we're gonna talk about that in tonight's video. And uh, as always, if you have not yet done so already, I would love to invite you to subscribe to my channel and or like my page, depending on where you are watching this video. And if you're not yet familiar with me and my work, my name is Arden Lee and I'm the creator of The Repatterning Project. That is an eight week course where we hack our beliefs, we examine our patterns, we bring our conscious awareness to our everyday choices, we bring mindfulness, to our thoughts and our habits for greater and greater self-awareness, control over our realities so we can create lives that are happy, that are fulfilling, uh, that go in the direction that we want, that we can shape the lives that we want according to uh, the ways that we imagine them. And we can bring those dreams into our reality. If that sounds like something you're into, go ahead and check out the description box where I have a link to a free PDF guide about the repatterning project so you can learn a little bit more about what it is that we do. And I also have a link to the Repatterning Parlor, which is a free Facebook group that I moderate, which you are absolutely welcome to join. Come and say hi. Uh, we are a group of like-minded individuals who are all trying to gain more and more sovereignty and creative freedom and empowerment over creating the lives that we desire. And as you know, surrounding yourself with people who share the same beliefs that you also want to start assimilating into your own patterns is uh, one of the crucial ways of, uh, of moving forward in your personal growth. So we would love to see you there. Come and join us. All right, so for today, we're gonna talk about um, what to do when someone is stirring shit up and it's making you mad, right? Um, this, was, uh, this was from a person who, uh, who is a member of the group, um, and uh, uh, who asked this question and you know I, I said hey I'm you know I'm making some videos again this week so if anyone has a specific subject that you'd like me to talk about it's another reason to join the group by the way is because you can submit requests for video content uh, and uh, and this person answered and said you know how do you release anger toward uh, someone who's a narcissist who's a, a liar who's twisting the story stirring up drama and you know, throwing pity parties for themselves and manipulating everyone's uh, perception of the uh, the external circumstances. And it was clear just from the way they worded it. I was like, wow, this is you're you're pretty attached to this situation. This sounds you know you sound like you're you're still carrying a lot of anger and attachment to it, and that's understandable uh, because I've been in there. You know, I've been in situations like that, and uh, and yeah, it'll it'll make you mad. You know, it'll it'll be incredibly incredibly frustrating. And it'll feel really unfair because someone is projecting a narrative onto you and trying to spread that narrative throughout your social circles that you just don't align with whatsoever. That is, you know, untrue about you. That doesn't take into, uh, into account um, their own responsibility for whatever they did in, in the situation. And, you know, there are situations where things like this happen that are that really require us to deal with them, right? If this is, for example, a work situation where your own job performance, uh, you know, or your, your own livelihood, your reputation at work is at stake because of something that someone is doing or rumors that they're spreading about you, then absolutely that is something that you wanna address head on. You wanna go to HR, you wanna start, you know, keeping formal, uh, you know, uh, documenting formal complaints, you know, if that's something that you're, that you're able to do and, uh, uh, and set the record straight, you know, and go on and, and use whatever, uh, whatever power you have in that situation to, to take back control of the narrative in that, in a way that retains integrity, right? 
There's also situations where um, that are that are really difficult to get through. Where let's say it's you know um, an angry uh, an angry ex um, using you know your 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 custody schedule of your child to get back at you, right? You have someone who is an angry ex partner who is making things up, um, you know, calling child protective services on you, saying that you know. I don't know, my dad once, you know, wrote this really like angry letter to the court about the fact that my mom had made me an undercooked grilled cheese sandwich for dinner. Like he was just looking for anything to, you know, to say like that my mom was an unfit parent or, or something like that. It was just, you know, just crazy. And yeah, that'll, that'll make you super angry. And that's something that you're going to want to have to deal with, right? If there are actual repercussions happening for you. But I want to allow you also a degree of freedom for those kind of situations that um, that don't have similar repercussions, that are really just people trying to stir up shit in your social circles and influence your friends and your acquaintances' perception of you. People who are, you know, going on and projecting narratives around you that, that aren't true making stupid Facebook posts about you, whatever it is. If it's not something that it's affecting your livelihood or, you know, affecting your relationships with your loved ones, um, especially, uh, especially, you know, you know, your loved ones who, you know, if, if it's affecting something like your relationship with your child where there's, you know, um, legal, uh, legal custody battles involved, that's something that's really serious. But if it's just affecting the opinions of the grown ass adults in your circles, I invite you to give yourself some more freedom from this because here's the reality. I know we hear this all the time. We hear that anyone who's doing things that are remarkable is going to get a lot of hate or flack or whatever. Anyone who is making strides in their progress, who is putting themselves out there, who is taking a strong stance on something, is going to attract um, hate or anger from people who disagree. They're going to trigger others who are unwilling to do the same amount of growth in themselves. And those people, in order to keep their ego intact, in order to keep their worldview intact, in order to keep their deluded self-perception intact, will go out of their way to make up stories that they might even, on some level, have convinced themselves into believing because their protection of their self-created ego identity as someone who is not participating in the actual real narrative that is happening, as someone who is not you know, responsible for the things that they ought to be responsible for. Um, that means more to them than really dipping into the truth. And the truth of the situation is that, as we're seeing now, there is so much more reward and so much more um, positive encouragement and reinforcement for those people who actually are taking accountability. So we're lucky to live in times where the world is rapidly evolving toward integrity and the world is rapidly evolving in its discernment of what is integrity and what is not. And that's why we're seeing, for example, um, all these people who, uh, you know, there's there's plenty of there's plenty of movements where it's happening, but just let's take the Me Too movement for example. There are all these people who are coming out with their their stories regarding the Me Too movement, and there are all these people who have been accused who are reacting in very old paradigm ways. Well, we'll just spin this a different way, like Kevin Spacey. Well, I'll just come out and I'll you know I'll say, oh, I'm sorry if that happened, but by the way, I'm I'm gay, <laughs> right? Let me distract from the real thing by, by making a narrative that actually has nothing to do with the situation, right? Oh, you can't attack me for a sexual assault because I just told you I'm gay, so. <laughs> no one's buying it anymore, right? Louis C.K. came out with a really half-assed apology regarding the women in comedy that he assaulted, and 
people looked at it and said, that's not good enough. You know, you can do better. There are people who actually took his apology and edited it with like a red pen and said, here is how you actually make a good apology. And there have been people in our spheres, whether they're celebrities or in our own social circles, who have taken this feedback to heart and who have said, I'm going to do the accountability, I'm going to do the work, and I'm going to come into taking responsibility for, for what I did. And then there are people who have gone back, like Louis C.K., and said, I'm going to just, just crawl back into my shell um, and wait a while, and then I'm going to come out and I'm going to just go where, um, you know, where I'm loved or whatever. I'm going to come out and I'm going to be, um, I'm going to appeal. I'm Louis C.K. I'm going to come out and I'm going to do a show now, as he did in, in New York, apparently, like, like maybe a month ago. And uh, I'm going to come out and I'm going to do a show where I make fun of the March for Our Lives kids uh, because I now want to appeal to the alt-right demographic that is not going to hold me accountable to the fact that I exposed myself to women in my industry. I was embarrassed by what I did. I thought I made an apology. It wasn't good enough. I'm tired. I don't want to do more work. I don't want to be accountable. I don't want to lift up women in comedy. I want to just come back and do my own shows again. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go make a bunch of, you know, stupid, tired old man jokes um, that won't appeal to that demographic anyway. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go and I'm going to dig my heels in. I'm going to be defensive. I'm going to crawl even farther back than I was before, right? Sometimes we call people out on their shit and they get more defensive than they were the first time. So given that we live in a world that is evolving that way, the best thing that we can do for ourselves is just stay in our own integrity and always, always bring our examination to what we can control and refuse to let people detract our energy from what really matters on our path. There are people in my life who, well, they're not in my life anymore, but there were people who were in my life for certain points during my own growth process who very clearly got triggered by some things that I was doing for myself. And ultimately I was like, that wasn't about you. This is about me. You know, this is not whatever it is that you're making up that has, you have a problem with. Like, you're not, this, this, this isn't affecting you in any way, or it shouldn't be because this is just me doing things for myself. If I was coming off and doing something that was annoying you or that, you know, whatever, you know, if there was something, if there was a, vi a boundary of yours that I was violating, then of course I'd want to hear about it. But I'm sitting here and I'm listening and, and no, this is actually just about me and my own choices that are none of your business. And if that's triggering to you, then you know, that's what's going to happen. And they're going to make up a whole bunch of stories that are about you being the villain, right? They're going to make you into the bad guy because they don't want to take responsibility for the way that what you're doing is making them feel because what you're doing has nothing to do with them. And they want to imagine that they're, that you're, you know, making some kind of transgression around them when really you're just triggering their own insecurities. You're triggering um, them to see where they're not moving forward on their own potential because you are whatever it is right and I just want to give you permission to pull your energy back from that you know I get it like I said I read that the comment um, that the person uh, left there and I was like wow they really they're I'm hearing like well they're a liar they're a narcissist and, and all this stuff and and you guys you know that the whole narcissist thing is a really useful archetype for us to look at, but I really, I'm really wary of, um, of just coming out and full on calling people, uh, narcissists, you know, because it paints them in this, again, it's this binary black and white thing, right? I'd rather say this person exhibits narcissistic tendencies. This person displays narcissistic behavior. But again, if we're, if we're just, you know, if we just paint someone with one, one color, then it's like anything they do becomes the actions of a narcissist, right? We don't allow for growth. We don't allow for change. And I'm, you know, I'm, I say that as someone who uh, was raised by a father who had extreme narcissistic tendencies that throughout the course of, of his entire adult life, he has not even tried to address. So um, even then, yeah, sure, you can use narcissist as a shorthand, but but just really look at that and examine that and, and look at how much power you might be giving that person to, to have an effect on you. And what you really want to trust is that the people who love you and care about you aren't going to believe a whole bunch of bullshit stories that someone's making up and spreading about you, you know? 
you can feel free to reach out to the people close to you and set the record straight and say, hey, just so you know, like this is going on right now. Here's what I perceive is happening. This is the story that they're telling. That's not how I remembered it. You know, that's not how it went down. Um, if you have any questions about it, I'm happy to be transparent about it, but I just want to let you know that this is going on and, you know, don't believe the hype, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever it is, whatever it is that you choose to, to say. Ultimately, as you're growing, as your bandwidth is increasing, as your reach is increasing, as your message is becoming more impactful, you're going to find that more and more. It's just a fact of life. The difference is you're going to be surrounded more and more by people who also love you and support you and see the light that you're bringing to the world. People who would never in a million years believe some, you know, toxic behaving person's account of, of who you are or what you did. It's important to surround yourself with people who care about you enough to see through the bullshit that other people are spreading. If you don't have a good circle of friends, then yes, that would be a problem. That would be a real big issue because all of a sudden someone is spreading lies about you and all of a sudden your whole circle turns on you. And I've had that happen to me too in my 20s, you know? What you want to establish for yourself is that community that loves you and supports you and wants you to be your best and holds you accountable to being in your integrity but isn't swayed by the opinions of small-minded people who are going around gossiping about you. You want to surround yourself with people who, whenever they hear someone gossiping about someone else, immediately say, what does this say about the person saying this, right? What does it say about you, right? Ultimately, we make choices to where we put our energy. And if we're constantly giving energy to the people who are leeching it off of us by, um, by stirring shit up in our social circles, then all of that becomes energy that we're not using for ourselves to do our own work in the world. And in a weird way, we're kind of letting them win, right? If we call back our energy and say, I know I did nothing wrong in this situation. I've really sat with it. I've really examined myself and my actions. I've learned, you know, what maybe I could have done better, you know, in some small ways from what this situation is teaching me. Sometimes the thing that I could have done better was not be friends with someone like you who's going to project a whole bunch of stuff on me, right? Maybe that was it. But if you sit with that and you know that you're in your integrity, you can say, you know what? I'm in my integrity. and I'm going to attract people to me who are also in their integrity and who are walking the same path that I am. And if my path feels threatening to you, if there's something I'm doing that, uh, you know, that you don't have the guts to own your, your part of and come to me uh, responsibly and, uh, and work this situation out maturely like adults with compassion and uh, a solution oriented mindset. If you're instead going to run around spreading up, you know, a whole bunch of rumors, if that's how you deal with things, um, then you're not someone who's going to be in alignment with me going forward. So I release you, I let you go. And when you do that, you're calling back more of your own energy and more of your own power to create the life that you want. And that's why it's so important. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video.